the present experience. Okay, so let's just start with a prayer and I'm going to do a little reflection. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. A little reflection based on something that's written by Henry Nguyen, um, his book The Way of the Heart, which some of you probably know. And he's talking about solitude. The very first thing we need to do is set apart a time and a place to be with God and him alone. The concrete shape of this dis discipline of solitude will be different for each person, depending on individual character, tasks, etc. Solitude is the place of purification and transformation, the place of the great struggle and the great encounter. Solitude is not simply a means to an end. Solitude is its own end. It is the place where Christ remodels us in his own image and frees us from the victimizing compulsions of the world. Solitude is the place of our salvation. Hence, it is the place where we want to lead all who are seeking the light in this dark world. St. Anthony spent 20 years in isolation. When he left, he took his solitude with him and shared it with all who came to him. We're at uh, a time of enforced solitude. Uh, for those of us who um, live alone, the solitude is, is complete. Um, but even those of you living with your families and so forth, you are being cut off from the world. And that space is a space which can either be uncomfortable or it can be a God-filled space. And it's an interior space or it's a cacophony, a sort of chaos. And I think for most of most human beings, when we, um, when we live our lives, we can hide beneath the cacophony. All the demands that come to us, especially if we're in a busy job or something like that, the phone goes, the next, um, next appointment, the things I've got to do. And when it comes to our time of prayer, very easily we just run away. Oh, I haven't got time. And actually we can feel that sort of prick of the Holy Spirit who wants to draw us closer into Christ and we push back because we don't want that deeper encounter. Solitude is therefore about this place that's set apart. And we, as it says in the gospel, we retreat into the, our secret chamber, lock the door and pray. The icon is one of these hidden places. And when we're painting an icon, we retreat into that special place to do it. Now, when we get sat at our desk, at our task, we can become very overwhelmed with trying to get it right. It's a task I've got to do, something I want to do, and I want to do it well. I want people to be pleased with my work. And of course, that can get even more busy as we're trying to compare ourselves with other people. And, um, you know, a little bit of pride begins to sort of uh, ride the horse. And instead of actually having a solitude to be with Christ, it becomes a space for my ego. And that is a real challenge. That's, that's really a big challenge for the person doing the iconography because you really want to let go of the ego and to be truly a handmaid of the Lord, to be like Our Lady, allowing the Holy Spirit to work through us. 
not as slaves with no brain, as though we're sort of a robot. God didn't make us to be robots, and uh, certainly he doesn't want iconographers to be mindless copyists. But to allow our creativity to be something that wells up from that presence of the Holy Spirit within us. So that the light of the Holy Spirit that we're seeking to show in our icons is something that we know ourselves, that comes, there's a communion, a connection um, at a very profound level. So here is the world in lockdown and we're facing this, literally this threat of death all our communities, all the way across the world, and, and an incredible experience. I don't think in the history of humanity, humanity has been so shut down across the world and still in contact like we are here. Quite unique. So we're all forced to go into our, into our solitude. Question is, what solitude is it that we enter into? as iconographers and the opportunity of this course is to go into a sacred solitude as it were to the desert and to allow the Holy Spirit to really pull to the heart and draw us to him. This image is Christ's gift to enable us to enter more deeply into that process of deification, sanctification, deesis, um, by actually spending these days with Mary at the foot of the cross. In this session, I want to enter more deeply into the expressiveness within the face, and we're going to be talking about the technical details of how to get an eye looking right and a mouth looking right. But try not to get carried away just with technique and instead try to enter each moment into what the technique is conveying and allow those to be a balance. So hold yourself in this solitude that we're in as a gift from God rather than a punishment on the world, but a gift from God to enable us to have this time apart and to allow ourselves to enter more deeply into the Lenten process of conversion. So here we got the face in more detail. And the good thing about this program is I can sort of blow it up. I'm using a program called Procreate. Um, and um, I find it a really very useful um, little uh, program which enables me to get onto the inside of some of these images. So I want to first of all just look at a, at a face and if you look behind um, the face you've got your skull and you see the these eye sockets, you see how deep those are. They really recess right in. And if you actually feel your skull, you can feel just how far they're set in. At the same time, notice the, the cheekbone here and here are really quite pronounced. And they give a lot of expression to, to the face, it, it gives that um, defining profile, and it's important to get that right. And then thirdly, look at the area here. Those teeth really stick out, and the front of the, um, the skull there, where the, the jaw is, the top line is really sticking out and then coming in to the nose, the teeth sort of pushing out, and then they go back in before then coming out on the chin. And if you actually feel your, your, your face, you can actually feel there's a real dip in here. Um, 
even though I've got quite chubby cheeks, there's still, you can feel where it sort of goes in slightly here and then definitely here. So the icon, like all, uh, all principles in Christianity, you know, grace builds on nature. So we're going to draw transfigured reality, but um, it's got to be true to what God has given us in nature. It's got to be recognizable. So we need to understand how the face is constructed naturally. So if we then look at this image, can you see that shadow area? Let me put a, another layer on here. So you see that area there, that area there, those are the eye sockets. See how big those are. And if you look on here, see how the sort of size that we're talking about. And then if you look at the, the cheeks here, you see how that highlight how this here is giving that cheek bone so it's relating to the, the that bone that was underneath and then look at the mouth you see that highlight here and that highlight here and that highlight here that's pushing that area forward just like we saw with the skull the teeth pushing forward the lips are pulled across there and you can see the highlight especially here and a little bit on there then this shadow beneath the lip there and then you see the um, chin coming forward so even though the icon is a very stylized form, it's being true to nature. So it's got to be transfigured reality, not imaginative. Um, you can see that I've been working on the, my, my example of the face. And what I want to show you, is some studies that I've done, for example, on the nose. Um, if, the no if you're looking straight at the, the face, straight on, the, the nose is going to be balanced. There's going to be the teardrop in the middle, and then the sides of the nose are going to curve slightly and come in. And the nostrils are going to come from where the the teardrop at the end sort of meets the sides and then come round and then sit a little bit up from the bottom. Common mistake a lot of people make is that they, um, they do the, the nose like this and then they make the nostrils at the bottom like that. But actually they should be further up there like that. Okay, so that's one of the things to watch. As the face turns, so the profile of the nose becomes more extenuated. So you've got um, a stronger line here as it's turning away from you because you've got a deeper shadow, um, a deeper gap, as it were, behind the nose and the nostril is reduced on the far side and then becomes more pronounced as the one closest to you. And then if you get the face totally turned in profile, then um, you end up with n just one nostril, which is quite pronounced. And then this, the, the teardrop and the 
edge of the nose become just one continuous line or maybe with just a little bit of a dent where they meet but really it's almost just one continuous line and the other thing to watch is the angle at the top here where the bridge of the nose meets the uh, where the bridge of the nose is um, if it's straight at you it's an equal angle both sides this as the nose turns that way the direction that it's turning into the the angle becomes more pronounced and the angle closest to you less so that's a sort of straight line almost along that side there whereas here you've got this very ex exaggerated um, shape so if we now look at This here, you can see that this is quite in profile. We've only got one nostril, and this is quite an acute angle here, and this is almost a straight line curving down here, and then meeting the, the nostril there, and this is more acute. And notice that this point on this side, where that uh, acute line meets the side of the nose is lower than where this changes direction okay so it's that point there and that point there you can see there's quite a difference between them now if we look to the eye which i've put up here there's your eye socket, which is where that shadow is. And what I recommend when you're drawing an eye, like I've done here, really shade it all back because that immediately gives you some form to the face. And then build your eye inside the socket. And those of you, a couple of you who sent me um, your uh, sketches, there was um, real problems with your eye. And I think if you can sort of situate them, thinking about them as eye sockets and the eyeball is in the middle of the socket, that will help you. And then the eyelid is coming over the top and coming round an eyeball. So if you think it's a, a ball like that, the skin is being pulled over here. Right, well, we've got less than a minute just to say goodbye to everybody. Um, I hope that's been been useful. Um, I think I might go ahead and subscribe to the um, the paid version so that we we don't have to stop um, dead on the forty minutes.